Photography, I think, is very strongly tied to the ideas of space and time. And because it's so strongly tied to these ideas, it can also transcend them. I am fascinated by the idea of looking at art as a way of studying the in-between. For example, I like to see landscape photography as a bridge to the past. If you photograph, for example, an ocean, you have to think about the fact that it looked exactly the same many years ago, even a thousand years ago. It was pretty much the same, maybe some, some small things here and there, but you know, we, we have this idea that people don't really, that we don't have access to the past, just to objects, we don't really know what it was like. And yet when you just contemplate nature, for example, you just are connected to the past and to the future. I guess, I guess this makes us uh, feel more part of a continuum. We'll go through some pictures from my archive and see how these relate to the ideas of space and time. So, um, this first one was inspired actually by the atmosphere we see in Tarkovsky's movies. In a way, I think it's very much what you would call representational. But I guess the, the colors and especially the shadows um, which act as a very fine, you know, transition, very fine lines from a composition point of view, make it somewhat ethereal. I don't think it gives one the sense of a sliced space, a space that is sliced in time. And here um, we can observe the space that is in between the time slices. Now, the second photo was inspired by the paintings of Kaspar David Friedrich, who is one of my personal favorite painters. He's a romantic painter, I'm sure everyone knows him. The, the picture is rather dark, it's ra darker than his paintings in a way, but I feel that the reason why I chose to make it so dark was that um, I was under the impression that living the mystery of nature and life is, for a certain time period at least, a rather curious and mysterious experience. The purple corner indicates that there is something beyond the fear of the dark. The, the tree, I also feel, is quite, you know, alive, it's there, it's living. This image is interesting more for what is not seen than for what is seen. This building, which is a new building, is quite interesting because it has an architecture that is quite primordial, if you will. What is captivating about it is that if you draw lines upwards from it, so if you draw like imaginary lines like this, you will basically obtain a cone. Um, which is somewhat of a, you know, like a rounded pyramid. And it is said that things that have this shape, that are pyramid shape or, you know, like for example, wizard hats, where they have these pointy hats, they draw certain energies from, from, the, from the universe. So I think that's, that's so interesting. And I, I don't know, I feel it captivates this, this spirit. Maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's what's so mysterious about it, about the, the picture and the building. Um, now this one is part of a series, well, it's not really a series, but what I like to call Guess the Year, because to me it looks very... You can't really tell when it was taken. I mean, of course, it's in our time. It was actually 2020, but I'm sure that if you were to see it and to be told it was taken in the 40s or the 50s, you wouldn't have second guessed it. So if you were in an exhibition and you just, you know, it's like an exhibition with the 40s and all the bad things that happened and the war and all that, and I think you would see this picture on the wall, you would just look at it and be like, oh wow, you know, wrecked house, like a house that's, you know, still standing, but you wouldn't be um, 
thinking, oh my god, this is not from the from this time. So I, I think that's always interesting when you can take pictures that um, you know don't necessarily look like one thing or another. Sometimes though, um, I I feel that photography can fixate something very well in space and time and thus release it into eternity. So it's, it's a strange concept, but I think it works in a way. Um, think about it, when you grasp something, you own it. And I feel that art has the power to do that and to encourage us to explore and, and live our lives, you know, to, to capture something and then when you capture it in a form of art or just in your mind you can release it you know you you it becomes part of yourself so it doesn't affect you as much and in and, and this sense I, th I think art is a great teacher